This is a 55 year old male, uh, shortness of breath for two months. Also lower extremity edema as well. Two plus during daytime. Uh, shortness of breath. Is it constant or does come and go? The shortness of breath is mostly at activities. Do you have any chest pain with your shortness of breath? I feel sometimes chest tightness, uh, like right behind the sternum, but sometimes, but that is not m my main issue. Do you cough? Uh, not much though, no. You, you try to figure out is it like it is like angina or it is not angina, yes. If, if you are trying to figure out there is, there is angina, it is ischemic heart or not, what question should you ask? If it was ischemic heart, if it is that bad, that causes chest pain, what is the typical situation? You get chest pain when you do activity, but your pain normally is that bad that you can't continue what you are doing. That angina, when you have it, it doesn't let you continue what you are doing because pain gets worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you think about ischemic heart, you should ask, when the pain happens, can you still continue what you were doing? If the guy tells you, yeah, I can continue what I was doing, it doesn't stop me from my activities oh, okay. that tells you see uh, this is a key question here that tells you huh okay then maybe this is really not a ischemic heart but if the guy tells you oh yeah when when i'm doing activity when the pain happens i must sit down i must stop what i'm doing otherwise i don't know what happens but i can't i mean i get so weak i get so short of breath i have to sit down that is more typical of ischemic heart Okay. You uh, also was thinking about uh, pulmonary embolism because he has the swelling leg for two months. I mean that is one other possibility. Yes. Normally it is one leg. Now can the people can people they get in both leg at different times? Yes, it, they can do that too. There is no pain in my legs. No, there is no redness either. It is just swelling. Mm -hmm. To think about pulmonary embolism, what other thing can help you? You know, as a clue that you think that there is pulmonary embolism. About leg. It is not about leg. This patient tells you, no, I don't have pleuritic chest pain. Pulmonary embolism um, could be a low blood pressure. We are talking to patient right now. Patient doesn't know that if he has low blood pressure. There is one simple question you can ask patient. It's not... There is one simple question you can ask patient. It's not very sensitive question, but you can ask. Sometimes they tell you yes, if they have pulmonary embolism. You ask them when you cough, if you cough, or if you had ever cough, or you ever had mm -hmm. coughed up any blood. Because sometimes when there is infarction, it causes a little bit bleeding, and you can cough up blood in that situation a little bit. Told me you don't have yeah, I said I don't have cough, but suppose even if you wanted to ask specifically, because you know, cough is something, but coughing up blood is really something else. You know, you may have only two occasions you coughed up blood, but you know, you would you will remember it. But do you cough a lot? No, I don't cough a lot. No, do you really cough every day? No, I don't cough every day. But did you cough a couple of times blood? Oh, yeah, yeah, it happened one time or twice. That can be, I haven't asked anything about night stuff. I mean, does it have any correlation with anything at night? Do you want to ask a question yeah. on that? Yeah, do you uh, sleep at night? Uh, uh, do you need to elevate your head at night? No, I don't. Uh, no, no. I don't have to elevate my bed at night. No, there is no orthopnea, there is no PND. It's no more at night. Uh, you have to rephrase this question. That's not a good question. No, nope. anybody complain of your snoring? Yeah, no, the answer is no. But I don't know right now what does he have right now. He you, doesn't have you don't know, you don't know what else to ask? Okay. You didn't ask anything about COPD in this case, did you? No, not. Do you smoke or not? No, I'm not a... And what is your job? I'm a plumber. Do you have any wheezing? No. What other question you can ask, always ask this question if you are thinking about COPD? This is a very key question. When you talk about COPD, you always have to ask, in the cold weather, do you get more sick? Like, do you get more 
cough really? and phlegm and chest chest problem in the cold weather. And what they get, they get a lot of symptoms during winter time. No, the answer in this case is no, I don't have that either. Now, suppose that you did examination in 45 degrees the, or the neck pulses are a little bit prominent, means you can see the neck pulsation. The rest of exam, suppose, is negative, means there is no, the chest exam is clear, there is no wheezing, and then the heart doesn't have gallop, and also liver is not palpable, you don't have ascites, but you have little bit lower extremity edema, 1 plus to 2 plus, you know. Let's assume there is nothing else in the, in the family history, there is no other medication patients taking, and there is no allergies, no like So what do you do in order to differentiate where is the source of this breathing difficulty and lower extremity edema? What are the tests you want to do? APG. Okay. Pulse oximeter. Okay. X-ray. X-ray. Okay. Dimer. Dimer. D dimer. D dimer. Okay. So its pulse rate is ninety-two percent, and that is at rest. Does it matter pulse ox to be checked at rest or at activity? Pulse oximeter at, re uh, at rest is still normal. That is normal to you? 92 is not normal. Pulse ox around 98, 99, sometimes 100, that is normal. Okay, you wanted to do EKG. We did EKG and EKG showed that in V1 there is R, S, R pattern and that tells you that and there is a mild right axis deviation okay you wanted to do EKG we did EKG and EKG showed that in V1 there is R S R pattern and that tells you that and there is a mild right axis deviation okay you wanted to do EKG we did EKG and EKG showed that in V1 there is R S R pattern and that tells you that and there is a mild right axis deviation means hypertrophy where? Right-sided ventricular hypertrophy. You have more stuff going on here. Wow, there is little bit hypoxia, there is little bit right-sided ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, what else you wanted to do? You wanted to do also chest x-ray. Your chest x-ray was normal. There was nothing in the chest x-ray. Now we did echo. First of all, ejection fraction is normal. First of all, ejection fraction is normal some hypertrophy of right ventricle as well. The pulmonary artery pressure, it looks very high. So what is the normal pressure of pulmonary artery? Around 12 to 15 millimeter of mercury. What is the normal blood pressure? Let's say it is around 120. Now this guy, when they did echocardiogram, the guy the PAP or pulmonary arterial pressure is around 75 millimeter of mercury. The left heart is good. Everything is telling us there is a problem in the right heart. The left heart is good. Everything is telling us there is a problem in the right heart. Where do you want to go from here? Okay, when you get to this level, you need first of all to open the book and read about pulmonary, uh, pulmonary hypertension. When you get a situation like this, you need to know if the lung by itself is normal or not. Because it may be not a primary pulmonary hypertension. Maybe it is secondary to a pathology in the lung. Means, if this guy has pulmonary fibrosis, he will have the same problem. 
if this guy has a uh, repeated thromboembolism, we'll have the same problem. It'll be pulmonary hypertension. How do you differentiate between them? You do a long CAT scan. In fact, it is called high resolution. It is called high resolution long CT scan. If you do that and your lung turns out to be fine, means there is no pathology in the lung, means there is no emphysema, there is no pulmonary fibrosis, nothing as such, then lung is not the problem. You do echo, which you did, to make sure there is no mitral regurgitation. If you have mitral regurgitation, constantly blood leaks back toward your lung, you get, you get a venous pulmonary hypertension, not arterial. But it, is, it starts with venous because your problem is in the venous side. means on the post-capillary side. And there's, there are ways to figure it out. It's not difficult. You plan to do a cardiac cat. You plan to do a cardiac cat. Basically, you refer the patient to a cardiologist. You refer the patient to the cardiologist to do, a car to do a cardiac cat to look at both right side and left side. You have to do combination of right-sided and left-sided cardiac cat. This is just going to the right heart and left heart, do the measurements, and then you can come out. Swan Gans does not give you readings on the pressure of the left heart. It only gives you reading on the pressures of the right heart and pulmonary artery and pulmonary capillary, and there it stops because you can't go down farther. You go from both femoral vein and femoral artery to the heart. Having all these studies, you can figure out that where the pressure is abnormal. And if you find out that the pressure is only abnormal in the right side and there is nothing with the left side, then, and there is nothing wrong with your CAT scan, there is no suggestion of repeated pulmonary embolism, then you are getting to a diagnosis which you exactly mentioned. It's called primary pulmonary hypertension. Primary pulmonary hypertension. Okay. By the way, what do you think BNP will be in this patient? Which part of the heart is responsible for BNP? BNP, mm -hmm. uh, right, uh, I think it's right atrium. Okay, good. And when we talk about right heart, is all hypertrophied and thick and high, high pressure system. What do you think will happen to the BNP? A guy like him will have a high BNP. BMP cannot tell you the problem is in the left heart or is in the right heart. It just tells you if the heart is under high pressure, under stretch or not. That's all what it tells you. And in this case, it will be high. Then this is a typical guy that what you do, you send it to a pulmonary hypertension clinic.